welcome to the CC show. You don't know what CC is? That's Creative Commons. It means we can do whatever we want with it. So we're here at episode 42. We have a fantastic show tonight. Tonight we have Zoo Parade episode 190. Uh, in this episode, Martin Perkins and Jim Hurlbutts, they're in the birdhouse at the Lincoln Park Zoo in Chicago. This originally aired on NBC. It's got color, it's got sound, it's in English. That's all you need. It's a fantastic episode. They explore the birdhouse and they do a nice episode and it's one of the best. Here we go. Let's show that. Television's original Zoo Parade. Presented each week at this time from the world famous Lincoln Park Zoo in Chicago. For today our subject on Zoo Parade is specially about birds. And where our location is by far the noisiest location in all of the Lincoln Park Zoo. Hi there, this is Jim Hurlbut. Welcome to our 190th Zoo Parade program. You probably already guessed that we're in the birdhouse, a place where you certainly wouldn't go if you were looking for peace and quiet. But we're not looking for that today. We're looking for Marlon Perkins, director of the Lincoln Park Zoo. Hello there. I'm glad you could join us again today. Well, Jim, I'm not sure that you're ever going to find peace and quiet in a building like this one, but at uh, least you're not going to find quiet. Not even at night? Uh, well, yes, of course, at night they go to sleep, but <laughs> in, uh, we're not in here at nighttime. But in the daytime, uh, you can get some kind of peace because of uh, some of the old friends that we have in here, some of the birds that are, are old friends of ours. These fellows here, for example, Jim, uh, who are sitting up on their billing and cooing oh. just at the present moment. I'm not sure I can get them to come over here, but I think if I try hard enough, maybe I could. These are little dwarf mackerels. Come on, kids. Come on, we got things for you to eat over here. That's right. Come on. <laughs> no, that's right. Come on over here. Slide down. Come on. That's right. Slide right down the rail. Come on, right down the rail. Now, quit like fighting. Can you imagine that, Jim, from billing and cooing to fighting like that? <laughs> and that's just all jealousy. These are little dwarf macaws, Jim. They're the smallest of all the macaws. They come from South America. And uh, <clears throat> just a minute now. Don't be impatient or anything. I have to break it open. So I don't have to. I mean, you can. You have a mighty strong beak all yourself, and and you could uh, you could break this off. I'm sure if you wanted to. Here, you want to be real real, real gentle now. That's peanuts. And uh, how about you? Would you like to come down here for peanut too? Come on. Come on, you come clear down. That's right. Come on, clear down. Oh, you're afraid of that old fella? Well, let's go over here on this side. He won't bother you, really. Oh, huh? now, that isn't fair. Typical domestic yeah. thing. Come on, that's all right. Here, here you can have that. That's a nice, nice little fella. That last admonishing remark. Yeah. Well, I don't know why, whether I should give you one of these, but I think I'll probably have to to keep you quiet. Keep peace in the family. Keep peace in the family. But these are, are, are midget uh, members of the Macaw family, which are members of the parrot family, as you mm -hmm. probably remember. But uh, it's a sm uh, quite a cry from them down to larger ones. Let's go from the smallest of the Macaws to the largest of the Macaws. Here's a, uh, this is Molly. Oh, Maggie. Maggie, yeah, Maggie, Maggie who is a, um, a hyacinthine macaw. Come on. Oh, I see one of Come on, come on, little girl. Yeah, come on. Let's, want to shake hands? Okay, all right. You want to play footsie? Hmm? <laughs> Hang on. That's right. That's a nice kid. Yeah. Oh, no, no, no. The minute that great big bill comes down, I don't have any inclination <laughs> to stay with her because... She has the biggest bill of any of the members of the parrot family in this collection, and perhaps of any of them. She has a little habit, Jim. Did you ever see her do this little jump and jump thing? No. Come on. Can you do a little jump and up and down? Come on. Come on. You have to jump up and down. Oh, no, oh, no. More than that. Come on. Get clear off the ground. Come on. Oh, That's great job. She made one. it by about yeah. a half an inch. That's a good one. She got clear off the ground that both time. Both feet. That's unusual. Uh -huh. This is, again, a South American bird, mm -hmm. a uh, fellow from, uh, <coughs> from down below the border and in the tropical jungle of the rainforest of South America. There are a number of different types of macaws, aren't they? They come from many different places, I guess. Well, most of the macaws are South, South America. American. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But the parrots generally come from... Well, parrots have a wider distribution than that. There are some African parrots and oh. some over in 
India, too, if you consider all members, the cockatoos from Australia. Let's look at some other different kinds of birds, however, Jim. Right down here, there's a fellow sitting here in the background, which is a new arrival in our collection. I'd like to open the door here for just a minute and see if I can get this fellow to sit up on a perch. This is a brown fish owl. Now, come on, Mr. Fish Owl. Let's, let's have you up on the perch. Come on. Up on the perch. Come on. No, no, no. Up on the perch. Come on. Let me see if I can do this. Come on. Up on the perch. Here. Come on. No. Hmm. Whoop. Oh, oh. oh. I, I thought I could lift him by his feet there, you see. Come on, let's see. How about a little flying here? Come on. Come on. Up on the perch. Come on. Come on, fella. That's right. Come on, now, sir. Now, maybe you come right up on him. He's got powerful big wings, hasn't oh, he? Oh, yeah. He's an Asiatic bird, Jim, from India and Burma and clear on down east of there. And I think he's a very well-named bird because he, he does feed on fish, but inasmuch as he's a new arrival, let's see if what he will do with some fish. We put a plate of fish in there. And whether he's going to uh, stay with the, us here on these fish now, I don't know because I had to disturb him just a little bit to get him to go up onto the to the uh, perch there, mm -hmm. and perhaps uh, at the moment he won't come down. These are freshwater smelt, and we feed those and herring to this fellow. You notice the streaking of his feathers is longitudinal streaking, that is up and down, down. from the head to mm -hmm. the tail, which is uh, a little different than most of ours. Most of ours are, are spotted, or there are some streaks in ours. But uh, well, let's leave him. Maybe he'll come to his fish a little later on. And come here to an old friend of ours, Jim. That's the, the trumpeter, the South American trumpeter. Come on, kid. You want to come down here and say hello to anybody? Oh, you're going to talk first without even saying hello? Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Well, that's not, uh, that's not as good as you can do. That's a different voice that he's using today. Come on, let's go. He has to crank it up first, you see, Jim. <laughs> Come on, let's go. Long, drawn-out sigh-like mm -hmm. thing there, Jim. That, uh, obviously, there's a difference in the two calls. It makes that little short call. That means one thing. Quite a thing, isn't that it? That means something yeah. else. Yeah, it is a wonderful thing. Yeah, quite a, a subtle thing. It's done down deep in the body. Way down. Mm -hmm. More or less with the mouth closed. And he's from South America, too. Now, people can make that same sound pretty well, too. Oh, yes, it's easy for us to imitate him. Let's turn around and get a better call here, huh? Again? Come on. Let's go. Oh, I'm not sure we're picking that up. But we have quite a number of these uh, trumpeters. Uh -huh. This is a greenback trumpeter. We have some brown backs that are clear across the building. I can hear them. And they're calling uh -huh. too. They're answering this one, which is probably a part of this uh, call system of the birds. These birds are very gentle. They come right down to you. You want to come over here and, and, and prove that? That's right. Come right over here and prove that because here's, here's a nice grape for you. And you can mm -hmm. just uh, have that grape and go on about your business while we move on down here to a fellow that uh, we know as Foxy Grandpa. Foxy, you going to come down here and say hello to us? Come on, what's the matter with you? Hello. Come on, what's the matter with you? Hello. Come on, Foxy. Come on, Foxy. Come on, hello. What's the matter with you? Come on. Come on down. Come on, Foxy. Come on. Now, isn't that the silliest thing that ever happened? <laughs> Every other time of your life, you're right down here with us. Come on here. Come on, Foxy Grandpa. Come on. <laughs> Well, anyhow, Jim, this is a slender bill cockatoo and, uh, from Australia. And he, this bill is natural. He has a, a bill like that uh, as a digging tool. This old fellow, at least, is always in the bottom of his cage except right now. No, I know. <laughs> and, down in front, too. And he's always over on the other side there, gouging around in the bottom of the cage and digging with this long, skinny bill. Come on, Foxy. Come on, Foxy Grandpa. Come on. There you go. Come on. Come on. You can make it if you want to. No, I don't think so. I don't shy think so. Shy type. Oh. I never saw him shy before. Though. I never saw him shy before either. He's always He's right down here. Snickety old fellow. Yeah. 
But then you never can be absolutely sure of the performance of animals and children, can you? No, not for a very long <laughs> time. Really. Come on, Foxy. Come on, Foxy. There's all kinds of things down here for you. Come on, Foxy Grandpa. We're going to put peanuts in here. Maybe here you'll come and get it. Foxy. Yeah, on. there's another one here. But uh, Foxy is, Foxy the, is the, the, the real character of this thing. The one that we normally have. Well, come on. You come on down here, too. I don't know if this one is tame or not. Never comes to me. Never have had this one because Foxy is the really tame one. And the one that always well, comes the first, over. even in television, Ron. So okay. <laughs> this one comes down. Jim, let's move along now right. to uh, another fellow over here and uh, see if we can have this old fellow come over to us. Well, come on. Do you remember this one's name, Jim? Sure, that's uh, Molly. Come on, Molly. No, Molly we had over here. That was Maggie. Uh, that was Maggie? <laughs> All right, then this is Molly. Hey, Molly, Molly come, on. come on. We have so many of these Maggie. birds. I get mixed up on their names myself sometimes. We have about uh, six of these uh, uh, red and gold macaws. And in the summertime, they're outdoors sitting in the trees or on perches in convenient locations in places like our zoo rookery. But in the, in the winter, being a tropical American bird, they must come in. Here's the thing. Now, I, I would like to just make one small suggestion to you. Why, well, uh, 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 my suggestion is that here's another peanut. Yeah. And you can have that instead of going away anyplace else. A uh, suggestion I'd like to make to the people who are watching is that if you, you can't, of course, see colors here, but you can see those at your own local zoo. And so I would suggest that for colors on macaws and many, many, many more of these birds that... Uh, that I just they, hope he doesn't take a handhold on my ear. That's the only... This is really a very gentle oh boy. bird. Yeah, a very nice, <laughs> gentle bird. And uh, he's going to groom you a little bit, I think. Yeah. <laughs> groom me? Heck, he's planing my head off. <laughs> planing your head? Now, you kind of Did you say planing? Planing, like yeah. a plane. That's right, with that beak. <laughs> well, actually, this, this bird is an exception among macaws that have these enormous uh, bills in that uh, this one has been a pet in a home. And of all the six or seven that are in our collection, this one is a particularly gentle one. And uh, Dan Galassi has, uh, will come and relieve you of that, Jim, any time he gets to be too much of a nuisance. Oh, I'll but you, you don't uh, get too close to Cookie down here with, with uh, the, the macaw. Oh, I'd like to come over here and... Come on, Cookie. Come All on, right. baby. Come over here. Come on, Cookie. Come on. Come on over on this side. Come on. Come on, little lead-beater cockatoo. <laughs> come on, little Cookie. Come on. That's right. Come on. Come on over here. Come on. Right. Let's see. Let's see. Come on, Cookie. What are you afraid of? All kinds of action going on here. Come on, Cookie. Come on. Come on, baby. Come on over and say hello. You're not afraid of an old macaw, are you? Oh, Cookie. What a thing. Is this our aunt day or something? Jim? I don't know. <laughs> These birds uh, won't come. Millie. Right Millie was all right. I called her Molly. I meant Millie. Millie, I no. think. Yeah, Millie was the, the macaws. Yeah. Uh -huh. Come on. Come on, Cookie. Cookie's a lead-beater cockatoo, but usually is the most gentle of all the members of this whole family. And, uh, of course, she is still gentle. There's no question about that. But uh, there's something disturbing this bird and perhaps one or two more this afternoon. There must be. Maybe it's the fact that Millie was sitting on the rail right here. It might in be. In front of Cookie the cockatoo, which is an Australian uh, bird uh, and a lovely soft shade of pink with a beautiful head crest. If she'd only come over here, I could lift her head crest and uh, show you the difference there. Well, Jim, it's time to move on to another cage. All right for you, Cookie. Have to see you another time. And uh, let's move on down now to one that I'm sure we're going to see up close. And that's an old friend of yours, Jim. Oh, yeah. Little Screech Owl. Little Hootie. Mm -hmm. Little Hootie. This is probably about Hootie the Fourth, though, isn't it? Because well, it's got bigger, uh, uh, those look bigger than... This I've is another them. one that we've had on as Hootie. This one is, is one of the gray ones. Hootie yeah. is a, a, one of the reddish color yeah, faces. Brown, huh? This one is a gray or dark color face and has these very pronounced feathers here, yeah. which they call horns. And the horns of, the, of these little screech owls, this is one of the eastern ones. You notice how slender he is by comparison. Mm -hmm. Hootie was always puffed yeah, out. That's but right. that's more or less a business of 
of their elevating their feathers or not. Just making themselves look uh, Make themselves inflated. look uh, inflate uh, with, with their... their People are that way sometimes, uh, too, aren't they? The reason we knew that this fellow's going to sit here because we have him here on Jesses. There are little leather thongs around his legs here, and there's, we put a little wooden perch here on top of the guardrail so that he'll have something to cling to with his feet. And he's a very nice, gentle little bird. You can pick him right up, and he'll, he'll come right to your hands. You can lift him right up like this, mm -hmm. and uh, then you can put him right... Whoop, 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 whoop. Oh, that's the wrong fella. way to go. Here, that's it. There. All right. You can put <laughs> him right there, and he's... Um, they're very beneficial birds to have around, Jim. People kill owls because they think they're mean birds or uh, birds of ill omen, but actually they feed on so many mice and other injurious uh, creatures like like that, that it's better to leave them alone. Why do you think that ill known? Because they fly at night, I suppose, oh, I and they think call so. them at night. The fact that they're, they're uh, birds of the darkness in the night time. Here, I have some mealworms here. I'm going to get those for uh, a friend of mine up here in the top cage. These are our uh, blue jays. Come on, kids. Come on down. Come on, you can come right down here. That's right. Come on. Nothing to be afraid of today. Come on, Mr. Blue Jay. Come on, right down here. Come on, here. Mealworms, oh, this is a great treat. A very great treat. That's right. You can even come right over here and get one if you want to. Here, come right over here. That's right. Just help yourself. Mealworms are a, a fine item of food for a fellow like this one. This is a, an American blue jay, one that you find uh, common right around any place at all, and a bird that likes bright and shiny things. Uh, besides uh, mealworms, would you be interested in anything like a dime or something? No, no not, not, not with a, a mealworm. <laughs> not when there's mealworms around, Jim. All right, you go ahead and eat your mealworm. We're going to talk about blue jays. They have uh, distribution almost around the world, and uh, in not the blue jays, but members of the family. jay family. Mm -hmm. And uh, we had uh, one of those uh, Asiatic jays on, the yellow oh, the magpie. jay. Magpie jay, no. which is... Uh, uh, it's part of that family. We have a number of different kinds of jays in this collection, too. But let's move along now, now Jim, and I'll put this mealworm thing down here. And I wanna, want you to come on down and see a, another old friend of mine that I'm sure isn't going to fly away from us, or at least if he does, he isn't going to go very far. And that's... Uh, needles. Little needles, uh, yeah. yeah the sparrow hawk. You have to my approach a bird, bird like this rather cautiously at the very end. Look what Jim has for you. Oh, maybe he'd like them. Right they like right uh, with some worms. They feed on grasshoppers. Want to try it? Go on. You can have it. Yeah. You can have it. No? Oh, it doesn't taste good, huh? Well, I don't know whether he's just... Uh, he hasn't had... He feeds mostly on meat here, and he gets uh, uh, mostly the meat to eat. Got There's another bird that you can get up on your finger. There, he took it. Oh, didn't like oh. it, did he? Wasn't, wasn't the right flavor. I'm yeah. sorry, Needle. Yeah. He's brightly show. marked, Let isn't he? Show, yeah. This is the eastern uh, sparrow hawk, and the smallest of all of our native hawks, one of the smallest hawks in the world. And I think he is bright, ni nicely no, marked, Jim. Do they have those marks, always have those uh, dark lines down under their eyes? That run well, down their uh, in varying degrees. Those from the desert region of the southwest aren't as brightly oh. marked as this one. Those from Southern California and Arizona. But the, this is the eastern form, and he's uh, very uh, brightly marked, I think, and a very pert little bird, don't That's you think? That's right, very independent and dignified, too. Uh -huh. He sits up very straight. And uh, uh, one of the nicest things about these is, while these birds may not return affection in the sense that they will cuddle up next to you like a cat or a dog, uh, still and all, they, they will uh, respond by not being too mean, that is, not being too, too rough about. Uh, and they'll sit on your finger and, and be more or less calm about the whole thing. And I think that's uh, uh, kind of a reassuring thing with a pet animal is to have one that is tame enough to, to sit on your hand and be perfectly calm about it. These animals aren't supposed to re return affection in the sense that uh, most of the domestic animals... Do they do. catch insects on the fly, Marlon? Well, the yes, these hawk. things are very, uh, very good about going after um, grasshoppers that fly up from the fields. And in grasshopper season, these little sparrow hawks feed uh, pretty largely upon those. And one of the nice things about them is to see them... Uh, 
pursue a uh, one on wing and grab uh -huh. it on the wing. Jim, we have to move, and we're going to have to jump over the fence here to do so. Oh, boy. There's a little stepladder there for you to get started. <laughs> I need and, a big uh, one. We can get over the fence here and, and move over onto the other side. Watch your mic cords. Mm -hmm. And uh, come over here, Jim, because there's a friend of ours over on this side. I'd like to have you see, but we're going to have to come rather... Oh, knock the ladder down with my cord. But uh, here's a Kara Kara hawk. I want to sort of slide in next to him here. And uh, maybe... Whoop, now take it easy. Don't, don't take off. Don't take off. Would you like to step back here? I'd like to turn you around so that Jim can see you. That's it. That's a good fellow. Mm -hmm. A very nice thing about these birds of prey is that you can handle them in this way. And uh, you can get close in with them and have personal contact with them. Many of the birds that are kept as pets in homes, you couldn't have this kind of personal contact with them. You'd mm -hmm. have to leave them in cages, you know. He's the national bird of Mexico, isn't he? He is, and he's on the, on the seal, the Mexican seal, with the, uh, uh, the rattlesnake, or at least the snakes, in his, in his talons. Well, why is his face almost bald? Is that a uh, characteristic of this particular bird? Well, I don't know, Jim. This bird feeds partly on carrion as well as the live food, and it may be that uh, he has a bald face because of that. Dead animals that are left uh, on, in the open, mm -hmm. you know, uh, this bird feeds partly, at least, upon those. But he does uh, attack snakes and the mice and rats and gophers and rabbits and all the other small things that... Uh, other birds of prey like this one do. Now, why don't you just slide right back off on your perch, and we'll make a little circuit out around him, Jim, uh, so that we can uh, go over to another bird that's on a perch right over here and slide in kind of gently on him because, you know, fast motions always fellow. frighten animals. Well, I don't know anybody that wouldn't <laughs> recognize a crow, but uh, this is a very fine fellow. This one is about as tame a crow as I think you're going to find anywhere. This is what taken out of a nest by, uh, in the summertime by you know, someone who brought it into us here and uh, kept it as a young one. And having a young one, come on, you want to hop up here? Come on. Uh, having a young one like this, you see that you could work with as a young animal without, young bird, without uh, getting him, uh, well, you can gentle him right down from mm -hmm. the very beginning and then t teach him what to do. You know, I see a terrible thing. He's showing the white feather. That's supposed to be a bad sign, isn't it? Oh, well, there's a little... Yeah, feather. let me see if I can turn him around. Oh, it's hard to see, I guess. It was. Just up here on the side of the face here. Here, right here on the back of the head. There's a little white feather right here, and there's a little one right here, too. On the wing, yeah. Yeah, right here on the wing. But that, uh, there, that isn't unusual. You often see crows with uh, a feather or two or more. And uh, occasionally you'll see an albino crow. No, all white. All I white, yes. That, we don't have any of those in our collection. But this isn't a mark of albinoism, the uh, white feather on him, is it? No, I don't suppose so, unless you could say it would be partial albinism. Jim, you notice the difference in the face here? There's no bare face no, in this No, that's right. Bird, he has and a there's some whisker-like feathers that extend down to, uh, on the bill itself, actually. Those are whisker feathers, are they? Well, they're feathers, yes. They're not down, though. No, <laughs> the down is underneath, and that's probably what this little white feather that's uh, come through there is part of the down that's underneath. <laughs> but uh, he's a fine fellow, and uh, although crows are a nuisance in many places, uh, we're getting kind of fond of them, don't we, Jim? Yeah, it's pretty nice to have them around close. Jim, I'm going to move over here now uh, to I'll our big through. flight cage and uh, go inside because inside this flight cage is a collection of all kinds of fish-eating birds. We have a great big group of them in here, and if you'll help me pull my mic cord, I'm going to open up the gates here and get this thing uh, started so that I can go in with the fish and start feeding them. Maybe we can, uh, if I don't fall off the rocks now, like uh, has happened in times past, I'll get across here with the fish and see if these birds will come to me. Now, ordinarily, they go to someone they know. There's Tony Vogel and, uh, and uh, some of the other Tonys and Dan Galassi and the other boys that normally feed the uh, birds the fish in here. They're, uh, well, yeah, come on, kids. Come on, you can catch some fish. Here comes the pelicans. Come on, pelicans. Come on here, let's go. Come on, fellas. Here. 
Come on, let's go here. You, you can get some fish. There goes the blue heron after a fish. Here's the crown crane. Come on, crown crane. You can get some fish here. Come on. That's an Australian pelican. Come on. Here's a European pelican. That a kid. You catch him. Here's another European pelican. Let's see if I can toss one at him. Come on, kid. Whoa, you're back into the rock. How about the stork sitting over here on this rock on the other side? Mr. Stork, you want some fish? Come on. Whoop. Thought you are going to grab that one. Come on, kids. Come on. You want to try again? Come on, European pelican. You want to try again? African. Come on. Whoa. <laughs> one over his head. Sea duck. We have some smelts here. And uh, here's a little fella up on the top. Let's see if I can toss one up to him. Come on. Come on, kid. Come on. That's it. It's a black crown night heron. And uh, here's another black crown night heron. Miss him. Come on. Oh, come on. Catch. Not doing so good today. Come on, you fellas. Come on, pelicans. Come on, I'm a strange fella, but uh, uh, I'm not your regular keeper, but that's all right. You can come on up here and get some fish. Come on, kids. Come on up here and let's get some fish. Here, do you, do you crown cranes want some? Here. Oh, I didn't mean to slice you. Sorry. Here you are. You fellas want some fish? Come on. Mr. Stark, you can have another one. Come on up here. There's all something new and different here. And uh, the fact that they... That I'm not the regular keeper, that the... Here comes a cormorant. Come on, cormorant. Come on. Come on, kid. Come on, cormorant. Here. You can die for yours. Come on, cormorant. Here. Those are Mexican cormorants. They come from the Gulf of Mexico. Come on, kid. We have other cormorants, too, that come from the coast of Maine, but these are the, the little Mexican ones. That's a kid. You get these little smelts in good shape. Come on. Come way up here. Come on. That's right. Come on up here. Come on. Lord, if I come over, Marlon? Yeah, come on over, Jim. You want to toss some fish? All right. They certainly wouldn't be any more afraid of two of us, maybe at this <laughs> point, than they were of me alone. How about that fellow up on the branch up there? I want to throw it up to him. Up high overhead up here, because he can really right. catch. Let's see if I can throw it up. All right. Well, oh, he missed it. I'm not a very good thrower. You try one, though. Well, here's a, here's a little one, Jim. Oh, Whoa, he missed it. That's my fault. That was your fault. That was a pitcher's error. That okay. was good. He got that one yeah. in good shape. All right. I don't know if we take another one. We could try it. Come on, here. Oh, oh that was short. That was, that was a light fish, Jim. <laughs> was that it? Yeah. Come on. That's yeah, it. Yeah, he's pretty good, isn't he? Yeah. Isn't that funny? It's because the regular keeper, they're used to having one person throw the food to them, and even though it's somebody that they know as well as you, mm -hmm. they're still not oh, well, sure. Oh, they see me in the building all the time, but they see me on the outside of no. the wire here. I go on the outside of the cage instead of inside. And then we've got lights, and we've got television cameras here. Let's see that big old pelican over there. Come he on. looks really like he wants to have it. Is Catch it? him in. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, he wants one. He wanted it. Come on. Here's a little coot down here. Maybe he'll come up. Come on, Coot. <laughs> Stanley Crane, <laughs> you come on up so here. Well. Come on, Stanley Crane. You can have a fish. Cranes feed on fish as well as, as grain and green things. There's a crown crane. Come on, kid. You can have one. You know, I think that big pelican's just afraid of my fastball, that's all. He ducks when I use that fast pitch in Maybe there. we tossed it too far. Toss it in the water. <sighs> oh, he missed that. Too bad. You want a little one? Well, there's a whole group of birds down on the back side. Now, it just goes to show how upset... Well, I think we've just about fed our limit today because our time is running out, but what are we going to have on Zoo Parade next week after the peace and quiet of... <laughs> well, Jim, uh, next week our program is about animals in constellations, and our special guest is going to be Wagner Schlesinger of the Adler Planetarium. That's next week on Zoo Parade, folks. Hope you'll all be with us then. Until then, this is Jim Hurlbut speaking, saying goodbye for Marlon Perkins, director of the Lincoln Park Zoo. See you next week. The technical director is Harry Mall. Zoo Parade is directed by Don Meyer, produced by Ronald Wernrath, Jr., 
came to you direct from the world-famous Lincoln Park Zoo in Chicago. <laughs> All right, Zoo Parade. I really enjoyed that episode. Uh, thanks for joining us tonight, and see you guys later. <laughs>